pops on. Um, I have learned now that if I create a live stream through an event, it is very hard for me to share it. So this will probably be the last time I do it that way, but let me see. If you are in my group, if you could please share this with the group, cause I'm having a hard time sharing it this way. So if not, I'll share it when we're done and they can watch the replay, but hopefully someone can share this. Okay, so good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. It's Friday, yay. That's awesome, I'm excited about that. I'm excited for Mother's Day weekend, so. Um, happy Mother's Day weekend to all you moms out there. You guys all work so hard, so I hope you all get to relax and enjoy something this weekend. Um, okay, so what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about what it looks like to be a prosperous personal chef, what it looks like to make consistent income as a chef, and how you can do that. So, um... I'm gonna start out, this is a little bit impromptu and we're gonna make it short and sweet, but there's some, some information I really wanna get out there because I think it's important uh, for you to have the right mindset when you're going about this, for you to really be able to um, kind of do this in a way that's gonna help you grow and learn and also you know, continue to get more clients. So let me tell you a little story when I was just starting out. When I just started out, I was in a group with a lot of other personal chefs. I did a lot of networking with other chefs. And I don't know about you, but I always wanted to really make a good income. It was always a goal of mine to make a good income. So when I first started my business, I was a big go-getter and really kind of doing everything I could to get more clients. So as I was networking with these other personal chefs, I met this chef and I'm not gonna say her name. Um, let's call her Dolly, okay? So when I was talking to Dolly at one of our networking events, she told me how she was making um, so much money doing two clients a day. Uh, back then, this was maybe 20 years ago, uh, the going rate for a personal chef was probably three 300 for the day. So. Back then she was doing two clients a day, making 600 a day. She told me, you know, it's so easy. I'm, you know, I'm doing this. I, I work from eight to four and she was going on and on about how great it was. And I was really interested in this. I wanted to know, you know, how did she, how did she do two clients a day, make all that money and not, you know, kill herself? So I asked her if I could go along with her. And she said, sure, no problem. She was totally on board with it. <clears throat> she was actually really nice, this Dolly. And so I had, you know, myself, I had gone to culinary school. I had um, trained in France and I had been doing everything very uh, high end from scratch. And so I really just thought that's what people wanted as a personal chef. And, you know, I still do that. That's still how I run my business. Um, but at that time I didn't know there was any other way. So, um, you know, I was really excited to go and see how she was making all this money. So I went with her and went to her house that morning. And the first thing she did was she showed me, uh, the cookbook she had been using. And it was, I still remember the name of it. It was called Cooking Light Five Ingredient Cookbook. I might even have it somewhere. Anyway. So I looked through this um, book and it was, everything in the book had five ingredients. So I was like, okay, this is cool. Let's see how this goes. Um, I'm just along for the ride. So went to the grocery store. She went down the pasta aisle. She grabbed a, a bottle of the, uh, I don't even remember the brand, but it's one of those jarred Alfredo sauces. And I was like, okay. She's like, oh yeah, they love this. They love this sauce. Then we went down to the frozen food aisle. She literally got a box of frozen mashed potatoes out of the frozen food aisle and put them in our car and said, yeah, I just, I just used the frozen food, frozen mashed potatoes. And 
you know, I'm quiet this whole time. I'm just taking it all in. Kind of, it's starting to make sense now. Now I'm starting to realize how she can do two clients so quickly in one day. Um, anyway, we, we do uh, the cook date with her and I, I did it with her and it was, you know, the food was, um, it was very simple. It was very basic, but she literally did her personal chef business for many, many years and was very successful in her local area doing two clients a day. She had no training as a chef. She had um, no schooling as a chef. In fact, you know, at the time I was very young, she was, she was much older than I was. Um, she was probably, when I met her, she was probably like in her 50s. So by now she's probably not doing it any longer. But anywho, the point of this story is to let you know that she was very prosperous as a personal chef. She was making, I don't know, she was making, you know, anywhere between $8,000 a month sometimes doing her personal chef business in her, her local area and using frozen mashed potatoes and uh, jarred Alfredo sauce. So, you know, I tell this story not because I want you to do that, but I'm telling you because I want you to sort of be able to, to understand what else is going on out there and also how can you adjust your service to maybe take away some of the labor or to be able to package an offer i know it's crazy huh <laughs> i know i it's shocking but it's out there it happens and she went on for years and years and years dolly uh and was successful as a personal chef and she was actually um very much a part of the chef network groups. So, you know, she was very involved in networking with other chefs and um, very interested in, in being a chef. And being a personal chef is not, the lesson of this is that being a personal chef is not just about the food. So I, I said this last time in the live stream, it is about the service. So it's about the entire service that you're offering. How are you communicating with your clients? How are you cooking the food? Are you, you know, they might like that she was only in there for two hours and everything was ready for them. You know, people have such different levels of knowledge of food that you have to be matched up with the client that wants the style of food that you want. So for me, it was almost the opposite. Like I literally would have clients that would get mad at me and say, why is there lemon zest in my green beans? They would just be pissed about that. They just wanted their green beans plain. You know, they didn't want me to put that extra bit of parsley in there for color. They didn't like that. They didn't like the green. Um, and, and ultimately those clients and I, we, we weren't a good match. And I was able to uh, see that quicker as I went on with my business. But the point is, is what does a prosperous personal chef look like? You may think that it looks like the person who has the most elegant menu, or you may think that it looks like the person who is only doing high-end dinner parties, but that's not necessarily what a prosperous personal chef looks like. You may not look at Dolly's business and think she looks like a prosperous personal chef, but she was very successful. So, um... Yeah, if that's resonating with anybody or if you have questions, let me know. Um, so let's say like you get a request from somebody and you know, it's not necessarily what you want to do. It's not your style or it's not a good fit. You have two options. You can either send this person on their way or you can tailor an offer, tailor a package back to them that might be a better fit. So which one is, is gonna be, is, is gonna get you to be more prosperous, right? That's probably the one that is, you're gonna package an offer back to them. So being a personal, a good personal chef sometimes means that you have to drop the ego a little bit as a chef, drop the, be a little bit more humble and sometimes just hustle because ultimately you need to make a consistent income, right? So what does that look like? That looks like regular money coming in every single week. 
I mean, hundreds of dollars every single week, minimum, right? Preferably thousands of dollars every single week. So that means you have to set up consistent income streams. How do you do that? You're not gonna do that with just one thing. You're not just gonna do that with one client, with just a personal chef service, with, you know, just catering. I mean, you have to really multiply your income streams if you're gonna do it. You have to offer tailored services to specific clients that they want. So the reason why Dolly was so successful is because in her community, she connected with a large group of people who needed help with their food. They weren't necessarily the pickiest eaters. They were busy professionals who really just wanted simple meals ready for them when they got home. And she was able to grow her business through her personality, through her fast service, um, and through her consistency. So that's what her niche was, and she was able to do that. So you have to figure out how do you wanna package your services for it to reach the right people. If you are only offering the high-end services and you're only offering really high-end food, let me see, I think I have a question. Oh, okay. If you're only offering the high-end food or if you're only offering one type of service, like let's say you offer a special type of cuisine and you're only offering that, it's gonna be, you're, you're narrowing down your client base. You're very targeted. So you have to be very specific in your packages and you have to create multiple packages if you do not have the people to bring in. So when I say being prosperous might not look like what you think it looks like, think about that. I was in business for over 18 years and I was consistent for probably 16 of those. So to have 16 years of consistent income, you have to create many different ways to earn income. Your personal chef services, your events, your cooking classes. And then you wanna create word of mouth through your clients. So that's really important too, creating that networking stream through your clients, offering them incentives to bring on new people and then hustle. Are you a hustler? Because if you are just chilling and you're waiting for people to come to you and you're, or you're just posting on social media and waiting for them to come to you, that's not how you're gonna get clients. You need to literally bring them in. I'm not saying you don't post on social media, but po post your action on social media. So post what you're doing in your business on social media. Don't just post, okay? so. I don't see any questions, so, um, you know, I'm gonna finish up and just say that your mindset is mm -hmm. crucial to be successful as a personal chef. So, you wanna be open. You are like a open field so clients can come to you. If you are very narrow-minded in your mindset mm -hmm. that you have to be a certain way, you're not going to kind of get that funnel of clients. So, um, you know, your mindset, you want to stay open. You want to stay, you know, open to the possibility of many different income streams. And you also, you want to take action every single day. You want to take at least three action steps. Are you doing that? If you're doing that and you're still not getting results in your business, then reach out to me. Because really, if you're taking action steps every day in your business, you should be seeing results. And if you're not, let me know and let's see if we can strategize and help you. Okay, well, hopefully you guys got a little bit something out of this. I have to work today, so I'm heading out. And uh, hope you all have a great weekend. Happy Mother's Day.